Hey, welcome back to the channel. It's the Bald Bearded Bicyclist, and uh, we are back with another race recap, this time at Freedom Run Winery. And uh, this was a super cool setting uh, for a race. Uh, this is usually the annual BBC Championship race, and uh, it's a lot of fun to have the winery setting in the background. At noon, they open up, um, have beer, wine, food, um, it's just a really cool place to hang out and uh, watch the rest of the races for the day. Um, the race here is picking up on the second lap after the climb. Um, if you don't know this course, there is a, a climb on the, if you look at the map in the top right corner, it is the right this right side of the map there. Um, it's about a two minute climb and uh, the first two laps things pretty much stayed together. There weren't really attacks. I mean there were a couple people that would uh, that would push the climb. The first climb was actually we ran it neutral. It seemed like really the first lap we <laughs> really rode neutral. It was really easy. I think I uh, averaged like 145 or 160 watts or something like that the first lap so um, when we hit the uh, climb the second lap uh, definitely picked up a bit but now obviously you can see we're just kind of um, keeping it easy again and seeing trying to get a grasp on who's going to do what here jumping ahead just a little bit uh, the only other real feature on this course other than um, some rollers, the descent after the climb um, is this hairpin, um, which through my experience I've found everybody hits it really hard after it, but it always comes back together because it's just flat and uh, everyone's expecting it. Um, so it might string out for a second, but uh, it, nothing ever seems to really get away here. Um, even though they're after a little bit of these rollers, there is a little bit of a small uh, incline, but it's it's negligible. And uh, like I said, never really amounts to anything. Not a lot of wind on this day uh, to speak of either. Um, first couple laps, I think I was looking at the flags on this stretch and they were completely dead. Um, later in the race, there was a little bit of a headwind on this section. so. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't really think it was uh, that big of a deal to change anything. But, you know, I was trying to keep an eye on Sam um, from Team Echelon right in front of me and uh, draft off of him and just kind of see the moves that he makes. He's won a few races before this one and uh, know he's smart and strong and... Uh, just kind of wanted to see what he was doing. So jumping ahead again, we are on lap three. Up until this point, there's really been no attacks other than a little bit of attack on the first lap um, that I and some of the other BBC people put in just to see how responsive people are. But you can see that on this third climb, um, Zach from Eyed Racing and Greg Sipes from BBC just attacked pretty hard going into this climb and they've got a pretty good gap on the rest of the field. Um, I kind of got boxed in um, between a few guys that just didn't really seem interested in going after it. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of stuck where I am but I thinking I'd, I'd like to get up there and uh, see what what could happen but I just positioned myself pretty poorly. So I take the opportunity to try to follow the once again racer and get around here. So I put in a little dig to pick up the speed, carry it over the top, see if these guys are going to try to bridge. I don't like that they just uh, sat up at the top because I know that that's, that's how people get away. When they, they're gonna, Greg and Zach are gonna keep pushing. And everybody's just kind of looking at each other here. I don't really want to do the work, but it's 
especially because I'm thinking, you know, Greg is a uh, is on the BBC team. I don't I don't really want to work to bring them back, uh, but at the same time, there's there's only two of them. Um, you know, it's probably not going to amount to much, but the this group is not really doing much either. So I kind of am thinking that you know somebody's going to try to bridge to them and I'd like to be in position for that so these guys hit it hard and I'm just trying to get on their wheel so that they can bring me up if they continue to work but I'm thinking well maybe I can just solo and get across so I hit it hard but I uh, I don't have the energy that I thought I did I saw that there's people behind me so I actually pull off I don't want to be pulling them up so now I just gotta try to jump back on this train here but people are working now I think you can see I believe that Sam kind of went off the front <clears throat> to uh, try to bridge by himself. The rest of the group slowed down a bit. Everybody's kind of looking at each other again. That's the trouble with Cat 4. It's like, <clears throat> you know, no one really wants to work together or, or do any work but then you know we do have a team so it's it just it's confusing because so I try to attack and bridge by myself Devin stays on the front and uh, was trying to hold them up <clears throat> so that I could bridge without bringing everybody up and I think it's Sam and Zihau uh, he's in the black kit uh, you've seen him in some of the other races um, they were the ones that tried to bridge uh, up to Greg and Zach. And Eric behind me, um, he got moving, jumped on, was able to jump on. I mean, he had to do a, a decent amount of work to get up to me as well, so it's not like I was just bringing them up but once he gets on my wheel I uh, I slow down a little bit too I don't want to be bringing him the rest of the way I'll let them do work so I kind of pull over let these guys pass and I'll get in their draft So at this point it all comes pretty much back together. There's a, uh, we catch Sam and Zihau and then you can see uh, Craig and Zach are just right there. Uh, we're bringing it all back together right now. So I, for a split second, think I should maybe counter attack because <clears throat> we just brought Greg back who's on my team and this does open up and I, just second guess myself and I don't do it but honestly I, it may have been a good move or at least uh, I mean it's not a good spot really to get away because it's flat and if everyone, people are motivated they'll just catch back on but you know people were working um, to uh, to bring it back together and so uh, another effort um, could hurt some people and then 
you know, if we were working well as a team, you know, maybe Greg could have gotten on the back of that and, and uh, gotten a free ride up and then possibly attacked again um, when they brought me back. But, uh, you know, being Cat 4 racers, I, until this race, didn't even know that Greg was actually racing as part of the BBC team. I just didn't know if, I just, if he had, had just got the kit. Um, or if he was actually racing with the team. We talked about it in this race, so um, I hadn't really gone into it thinking that we could uh, use much team tactics, but um, that would have been an interesting um, way to play this. But we, uh, we did drop some people on that climb and uh, so we're kind of yelling out to each other to keep the pace up because um, you know anybody that we can start dropping uh, helps us by having a little bit smaller of a field less people to contend with so uh, you can see that chain just dropped on the left there everybody's yelling <laughs> a little, little scary when that happens yeah, you could hear that the chain hitting the spokes of his back wheel. Could have been uh, pretty dangerous. <laughs> so everybody's getting ready for this hairpin. Like I said, everybody hits it really hard after this hairpin, but it's just there's really no reason for it. We all always just get brought right back together. Jumping ahead again, this is the uh, fourth lap and the fourth time up the climb. Um, we're just passing some of the uh, women from the women's race. Uh, they run a lot of these races uh, consecutively. Um, uh, otherwise, it'd be a very, very long day. <laughs> we never finish. So a lot of the uh, other races do. I think they do like 76 miles or something like that. So uh, crazy. I'm not looking forward to getting um, <laughs> longer races like that. So I was kind of stuck a little bit behind um, Matt and Ryan, who who didn't really want to follow this attack. Um, but uh, I again kind of just found myself in in bad position to um, follow the attacks of these hills. I really should have gotten behind people I know are going to go with the attacks and, and our, our better climbers. Um, Greg uh, is, is going to go with these. Um, so there's Zach, Greg, and Andy um, from Nail Gene Cycling. Um, and then this is uh, Andy from Once Again Racing, but he's kind of falling off the group. Um, I kind of yell it out to him that uh, we should work to get up there. I try to keep the power on over the top, um, but I am definitely hurting. Um, I think 174 was the highest my heart rate got all day. Um, and I was feeling it. So I'm trying to keep pushing and I think I looked back and I saw people were coming and I just wasn't, we weren't gaining on the front so I'm not quite giving it everything anymore. Um, but I think I decided, you know, maybe I'd give it a little bit more after the turn, see if I could close it a little bit more. So, yeah, you can see everybody making the turn behind us. We, we don't have a huge gap on them. And so I, I pretty much cut it. We're, uh, we're stuck in no man's land right now. But what I didn't expect was for Sam to attack through real hard. Um, 
and then there was a gap between them so i couldn't even i was hoping that would all at least i'll be together and i can grab onto the back of the group i wasn't expecting there to be such a big gap so now i'm trying to hit it hard to get up to these guys and then uh, they look back um, sam realizes that we're on them so he eases off he doesn't want to drag everybody up to them it's totally understandable but uh, kind of left wondering how we're going to close this up or if anybody's going to attack, try to bridge across we can jump on a wheel but the uh, you know, I definitely know that with it being the fourth lap um, and there being strong guys in that uh, breakaway it's definitely dangerous, um, a lot more dangerous than just having the two people the first time. Um, I should have stayed closer on Eric's wheel and really wouldn't have had to search so much. But obviously I'm going to let him try to do whatever work he wants to do. Again, I've got, Greg is in that breakaway so I don't really want to do a bunch of work by myself. Um, I'm looking at this. I did take a decent little pull there, but now I'm going 100, 150 watts. I think I was battling in my head whether I, I wanted to uh, try to bring them back or not because I knew Greg was over there. Definitely open to uh, people bringing me up though. So, anytime people go by, I'm trying to grab a wheel. Damn, we're, we're pretty close to him here, but again, I don't want to bring everybody up by myself. So I'm putting in a little bit of effort, but then I pull off. I was really just trying to carry my momentum from the, uh, the descent there. See these guys going, and I gotta get on it. See how close they are. I feel like everybody um, kept quitting a little too soon. Nobody wanted to actually close the last bit of the gap. And I'm realizing that I don't know if it's maybe just a cat four thing, but if we get this close, that's when you just gotta maybe attack from the back and um, 
try to close that little bit by yourself and make the other people work um, but you, you gotta take the chance and get up there because it's that or they get away and uh, I don't think I was willing to really commit again it gets confusing because there's a BBC rider up there um, but had I attacked all the way from the back then I probably would have been able to get enough speed differential that I wouldn't be dragging everybody else with me I think there's a part, we'll see soon after this hairpin, I think we get so close to them and looking back at it, it's just like, oh, I wish that I had just jumped across. I think I was well positioned for it too. And uh, definitely a lesson learned because if I see myself in that position next time, if I'm you know, at the back, a good position to to attack through the group I mean those, those guys are so close you can see them I hit a thousand watts I'm carrying speed right here really I should have just used it to slingshot around and uh, I mean they definitely the group picks it up for a little bit after that turn but then they stop again Look at them, we're so close. Right now, if I attacked right now, with everybody looking at each other, oh my gosh, they are right there. <laughs> it's so funny to watch it back and just realize that there's such a little gap there. My heart rate was looking good. I'm not doing a lot of work. Had I just... And now, I mean, they're getting away now. We, we slowed up tremendously. But, uh, it definitely would have been doable. I think here is really important. If you look on the left, there's a car that pulls out, takes a left turn, and then is in between us and the breakaway. And I think a lot of people, we just lose motivation to get them because all of a sudden we can't see them. So it's so important to keep that breakaway in your sight. And, you know, we, we had a lot of opportunities where they were close enough that if we just put in a dig, we would have got them. But now, I know they're right in front of that car. They're not that much farther away, but but we can't really see them on the straightaways. So psychologically, uh, it definitely helps them. And you know, I, I again, I don't want to pull everybody, um, so I just kind of pull off to the side. But we'll skip ahead a little bit again. So lap five this is the last time going up the climb. Um, I did not follow my own advice. I knew that I should be following Sam. From Project Echelon. Um, I get behind Matt, who I know he's very strong, but uh, he is not going to be the one to push it up the climbs. And I should have just jumped around him right now to get on um, Sam's wheel, but instead I, I let myself get boxed in um, by riders who are not going to follow um, a strong attack up this hill. And Really, this is the second time I've done this, so I should have learned the first time. But Sam looks back. I think he sees, and even here, I could have, I could have just jumped across. I even give an effort, but I don't quite ever get on the wheel. And it would have been a lot easier if I was just positioned better in the first place, because I gained some ground, but. Uh, and they, they 
pick it up again. It's not there. Oh, and then he starts, starts getting away, and he hits it hard over the top, which is what you got to do. And I just didn't have it. Oh, 177. Yeah, that's that's hurt. That's hurt. And I think at this point, I'm kind of looking back. I'm hoping for some help. No one's on my wheel. And I just. Ugh, had I just kept pushing a little bit harder, a little bit longer. So Ryan gets on my wheel. Um, he's telling me he's he's beat. I'm feeling the same way. I'm seeing these guys get away. I feel like you know, I just gotta give it another effort, see if I can get on their wheel. So I'm trying, I'm bringing it up. 300. Ryan says, you know, I'll give you, I'll give you everything I got. And uh, <laughs> he immediately starts to drop me. <laughs> I'm not quite on his wheel. I mean, he was smart to use that draft for the <laughs> draft driver for a second, but. You know, I now my gap on him, and I'm, I'm just dead. My power is dropping, and he is so close. He was telling me he was yelling out to them to slow up for a little bit, and then he, you know, saying that he'll help pull. But uh, I think that just urged them on. So he never quite makes it, and I'm stuck in no man's land. And at this point, I'm I'm thinking I'm better off just dropping back, trying to work with the group if they will. But there were so many little opportunities in this race um, where I just feel like you know if I could just push a little bit longer. I could have made a lot of things happen. A um, couple of those climbs, if I had positioned better, and if I had responded a bit quicker to some of the attacks, um, got on wheels a little bit quicker, better, um, I could have done really well. So um, Sam and Zihao uh, end up uh, bridging to that breakaway. Um, so it becomes a breakaway of five um, Scully ends up falling back to us here and um, and then we pretty much uh, just ride the rest of the the race together um, but uh, yeah that that breakaway is gone that was the last uh, opportunity we had when they when those guys bridged so it's last lap um, nobody's really working together we even had a guy bridge to us um, not really work with us and then he went off the front and the group just didn't want anything to do you can see with him he's he's out in the front there so um, at this point I'm thinking well maybe I can just attack and get away from this group as well so hit it hard um, and uh, Scully and Matt uh, from Pursuit, they are able to get on my wheel but I realize I'm I'm pretty dead here um, and I also don't want to lead them out the entire way um, so I tell Ryan, you know, just go around me I'm, I'm already dead I really should have tried to get back on the back of there um, I just gave it the rest I had but uh I just had nothing left. I, I was exhausted. And uh, I wasn't paying attention, and Aaron ends up coming around me too. So I think I end up getting eighth. But honestly, I was pretty happy with this race. Um, you know, I wasn't too far off the front. Um, I think I was only like 30 seconds back or something like that. Um, so, you know. I don't know if you're going back to my last video where you know I was I was pretty frustrated with a bunch of loss of fitness I was sick I was off the bike um, 
I had restructured my whole training plan. Uh, this was no longer my A race, and it was just kind of a training race. Uh, so with that being said, um, I was really pleasantly surprised by how well I felt um, and, uh, and how well I did. So I'm um, looking forward to the rest of the season and just trying to um, get as fit as I can, really aiming for next season. But um, it's been a lot of fun. and. Uh, Hopefully you enjoyed. Like, subscribe, and uh, see you on the next one. Thanks a lot.